Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to derive the single degrees of freedom. Uh, I am going to derive the governing differential equation of your single degrees of freedom. It is going to be a damped system and it is going to be a forced vibratory system. Okay. So first, uh, let me draw the physical scenario. So it is a spring mass system. I should draw like this. So it's a spring mass system. There we go. That's right. So there is our spring with the stiffness of magnitude K. And uh, here is our damper with a damping coefficient of magnitude C. And uh, there is a mass that is mounted on this spring mass system. Okay. That's it. So the mass magnitude is m. Well, this is not a free vibratory system. This is a forced vibratory system where the magnitude of the force can vary in a sinusoidal manner like this. F is equal to F naught into sine omega t. So if you are plotting the magnitude of the force along the y-axis, and uh, time along the x-axis, obviously the force is going to vary in a uh, sinusoidal fashion like this. That's right. Okay. Now, uh, one example where this type of force can occur, suppose there is a rotating part. Say there is a rotating part here. It may be a motor with an eccentric mass and it is rotating. The rotating object exerts a force radially outwards. The magnitude of the force is the centrifugal force, which can be written as uh, m omega square r. And you can resolve this force into two components, one along the x-axis and one along the y-axis. And if you look at the magnitude of the force that is resolved along the y-axis, it will be f sine theta. Am I right? That's right. And what is theta, by the way? Theta is the angular displacement. And what is angular displacement? Well, you just use the formula for velocity, guys. What is velocity, by the way? Velocity is distance over time. In our case, it's not just velocity, it's angular velocity. It's going to be angular distance. I'm sorry, it's angular velocity, right? Omega. Angular velocity, omega. Maybe I should write here uh, so that it, you understand things better. It's angular velocity, omega, here. And that is equal to angular distance, theta, divided by time. So that is angular velocity. The unit for theta is radians and the unit for second, I'm sorry, time is second. So it's radians per second, so you can easily work out for theta, which is omega t. And all you have to do is take this value of theta and uh, plug it here in this equation. So that gives us the equation for the vertical component is f sine omega t, uh, which is exactly the same as this equation. So you have an equation where the forcing, forcing frequency varies in a sinusoidal manner. I mean, the external force that is acting on the spring mass damper system varies in a sinusoidal manner. All right. Now, the physical scenario is established. Now, we are going to derive the governing differential equation, which is going to be very, very simple. Now, what is the action force? It's very simple. What is the action force? Action force is this. The force that is acting, it is this action force. Okay, maybe I should change colors. Maybe I will use red color to derive the governing differential equation. So let me draw a partition line here. So I'm going to derive the governing differential equation. That's right. So the action force, let me bring, okay. The action force F action and that is f naught into sine 
omega t, so that's our action. According to Newton's third law, for every action, there should be an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, where do you think this reaction is coming from? Well, if for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the first reaction is going to come, is going to be the inertia, the reaction, the inertia offered by the mass itself. So what is the mass? Well, you, you see the box, the green box. Maybe I am putting red color here so that you, you begin to understand the mass that I am going to talk, that I am talking about. The mass of the system, right? So that mass into acceleration of the mass. That's right. That is going to be the first reaction. So one example is, um, well, um, the, the example is, you push your mass and if the mass is accelerating with an acceleration A, it's going to offer you the same force back to you, right? It's going to offer the force MA back to you, right? So if you're in deep space and you, if you're just giving a push to the object in deep space, maybe an object of mass M, then if the object is accelerating because of the push that you are giving, then you will be experiencing the same force back at you. MA, that is the force that you will be experiencing. So that is one of the reactions. Because if you ask me this question, whether there are going to be other reactions, obviously, yes. There will be reaction offered by the spring and there will be reaction offered by the damper. So there is going to be the second reaction. That reaction, number two, is going to be this reaction that is offered by the spring. And that is given by Hooke's law that states that Hooke's law where stiffness is the magnitude of the force required to stretch the spring by an amount x. So obviously because of the external force if the spring is getting deformed or stretched by an amount x or compressed by an amount x then the reaction that is offered due to the spring it's kx. And there is going to be the next reaction which is due to the damper and uh, that is third reaction and uh, that is given by the damping force into the velocity x dot. Um, I think to be consistent with the notations mass times acceleration is two times the derivative of twice you differentiate the displacement so m into x double dot. So these are the reactions for the action. So what is Newton's third law? You just equate the action and the reaction. That's it, right? You, you just have to equate the action and the reaction. That's it. So that is Newton's third law. So what I do in the next step, I'm going to equate them. So let me equate the action and the reaction. So the reaction, the first reaction is m into d square x by dt square mass times acceleration. The second reaction can be the reaction due to the damper C into velocity, damping velocity of the mass. Plus the third reaction can be the reaction due to the spring force, right? And that is equal to the forcing frequency, which is F naught into sine omega t. So I'm going to put a nice box to this governing differential equation. That is the box. So this is the governing differential equation of your single degrees of freedom damped forced vibratory system. Now this is part one of the video. So in part two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this governing differential equation. See, uh, uh, I think we, we have already seen that if you solve the governing differential equation, you are going to get a secret. So there is a secret that is hidden in this governing differential equation that enables you to take some very smart engineering decision and that secret is x. Okay, So if you solve this governing differential equation, you can get what is the value of x and what is x by the way? Well, it is the distance to which this mass is going to move and that distance is going to change with respect to time. So you are going to find the value of the displacement as a function of time. Of course, it's also going to vary in a sinusoidal fashion. So you will be tempted to assume a trigonometric uh, solution, a trial solution for this governing differential equation. So I leave this up to you.
whether you are going to assume a cos solution, a cosine solution or a sine solution, it is up to you. But in the part two, I'm going to demystify what is the type of solution that we are going to assume, okay? I will also talk about the particular integral complementary function in part two of the video. But one point that I want to say here, out of these three reaction forces, you see, out of mass times acceleration, k into x and c into x dot, please keep it in your mind. You know, suppose if you are standing here, well, this is going to be a weird example, but I'm just going to draw this picture anyway, maybe in the fresh page, I'm going to draw this picture. This is a completely weird example, but anyway, just I want to do this, okay? So just imagine that you are here, a big person. Um, yeah, well, this is a very funny picture. Uh, well, well, but I hope uh, it gets across the concept. And uh, you are standing here. That's right. And let us say that the spring is attached on top of you. Well, I'm doing this just to get across the concept, okay? It is attached to you and there is a damper here. Hmm? And there is our mass, M. The forces are, the reaction forces are MA and MX double dot. So that would be better. So MX double dot, that's right. Uh, MX double dot and the next uh, reaction force is K into X and the next one is C into DX over the DT. Out of these three forces, you, if, if this is the system, and this is you, you will be experiencing only these two forces, okay? And you are not going to experience the mass times acceleration. Well, this is how the suspension system is working, okay? Which means that you are going to experience only these two forces. What is the force? One is the spring force, another one is the damping force. So you will be offering a reaction, let me put the red color, reaction to only to these two forces. One is the spring force, another one is the damping force. And you are a happy person. And why you are a happy person? You are a happy person because you are not going to experience the whole of the external force because this force you will not experience. You will not experience. Hmm? Experience. So think about it. And uh, this concept is going to be very useful to design the suspension systems and also to design, to understand the concept of vibration isolation and engineering. This concept can be very useful. So just think about it mass times acceleration, that force you are not going to experience, okay? And the reaction is going to come uh, come only for the spring force and the damping force, which means that in this case, the force that is going to be transmitted to the foundation will be the spring force that is going to get transmitted to the foundation and also the damping force, whereas mass times acceleration will not be transmitted to the foundation. Okay, I hope this picture makes the concept a little bit intuitive. Just imagine yourself in this position and see that the mass that is accelerating, that force you are not going to experience, but the spring force and the damping force you will be experiencing. Thank you so much for your patience. We will uh, continue this discussion in part two where I will be solving the governing differential equation. Thank you so much.